10 from the 18-yard line. Rodney Pete going deep and incomplete intended for Irving Fryer, who had a step on Evans. So Fryer, the venerable one, the target there at second down and 10. Monday Night Football is being brought to you by Pepsi AC Acid Controller. You can be heartburn free with Pepsi AC. FedEx, just what you want, just when you want it. It wasn't always this way, but with FedEx, it's the way the world works. Cadillac and your Cadillac dealers. And Brewery Fresh Budweiser, who reminds you, fresh beer tastes better. That last pass was close, Frank. That was real close to being seven points for Philadelphia. Second down and ten now. And this is Ricky Waters. And that's a quintessential look at his running style as he takes it to the 35, tackled by Robinson and Kuntz. Well, you saw Ricky covering up that football. He lost one, a key one going in for six points last week against Washington. He's had problems throughout his career as a fumbler. And he had that ball covered up that time going through the line of scrimmage. He's a scrambler, a fighter, he's a hustler, always trying to squeeze out the extra yard, and that happens to running backs who, who give it that kind of an effort. you got to cover it up if you're going to do that. Slashing runner, first down from the 34-yard line. That's Garner in motion, and they give it to Waters, and there's no hole that time. Stopped there for a gain of one as the tackle is made by Gilbert Brown. The way the Packers line up defensively, Gilbert Brown is... More often than not, on top of the center, they leave Sean Jones and Reggie White right there out on the ends, and then Santana Dotson, their other defensive tackle, flips from side to side, depending upon which way they want to play the strength of the formation. But Big Gilbert at 325, 330 pounds pretty much stays right on top of that center. Sometimes he'll cock a little bit. Second and nine, four minutes into the game, Green Bay leading 3-0. Deep. To Ricky Waters and Ricky tackled immediately. Brian Williams with the coverage. The linebacker staying right with him. Minimal game. Brian Williams has really emerged as a linebacker, a real force. Third round draft pick a year ago out of USC. They didn't quite know what to do with him. All of a sudden, training camp, he became the start on the outside, and they were able to move George Kuntz to middle linebacker, and that's where they were hurt mostly by free agency. They lost the middle linebacker from a year ago. Govea, who's, uh, they feel he was the worst loss they had. On third down and seven. Pete, the pump fake, buys time, and then incomplete. Great coverage intended for Mark Say with Craig Newsom draped all over him. Fourth down. Thank you. I don't know anyone who could have handled that. Pete had everything on it. Man was well covered. He tried to force it in there, but it was a wrist breaker. He really had smoke on this one. Slow motion, it doesn't look like it, but you can see Fryer almost, or rather, Mark Say almost trying to avoid it. Tom Hutton to kick, and the former Heisman Trophy winner, Desmond Howard, who won the Heisman at Michigan, back to receive. And he's a dangerous threat. 50-yard boot to the 13, and he might have been a lot more dangerous if he didn't lose his footing. He's tackled at the 19-yard line. Well, that was a good-looking return. <laughs> yeah. 9.59 left in the opening quarter. Monday night football in Green Bay for the first time in a decade. 3 nothing Packers. Brett Favre, when you take his opener last week and put the last seven games of last season in there, look at those numbers. Dan mentioned at the top, 25 touchdowns, two interceptions, and a rating of 125.9, which is phenomenal over what amounts to a half a season. From the 19-yard line, here's Bennett picking up seven yards. How phenomenal is it? Well, in the history of the NFL, over any eight-game span, Steve Young and Joe Montana had slightly better ratings at certain points in their career, and there's a commonality there, of course. Young, Montana, Favre, and Mike Holmgren. That's leaving out the playoff game, too, against San Francisco, where he was spectacular last year. Of course, those were regular season games, but he had a great game against the 49ers. They blew them away. Two to one ratio is, is pretty good. Three to one's extraordinary. How about a 12 to one? Mm. 25 touchdowns, two interceptions. Holmgren, an assistant in San Francisco, 
with Montana and Young, and now the head coach, of course, here as Bennett picks up a first down, taking it to the 30-yard line, but a marker is down at the line of scrimmage. Zordich makes the tackle. Bernie Kukar will give us the call. And the Green Bay was moving just a little early there. Well, and they kind of went towards the Eagles. Mike Mamula might have been the guy in the neutral zone. Well, the play gained five, so it's a, it's a wash here. Take it or leave it to pick up the first. On the defense, number 59. That's a five-yard penalty resulting in a first down. Mamula gets hit by the hard snap count, kind of falls forward into that into the zone. That's him. His helmet just at the upper right of your screen. You can see him. He falls right into it. Not only do you cost your team five yards, but you're in such an awkward position that it's tough to get back into the play. That's the Packers' first first down, and Farr throws, and again, too high. Robert Brooks, the intended receiver, so Red is 0 for his first four with 8.56 left in the quarter. 3-0 Packers. Again, maybe just a little high early in this game, but, I mean, he also got a little bit of pressure. He knew he had to deliver that ball. Sherman Lewis on the left, the offensive coordinator of the Packers, and really one of the top assistant coaches in the National Football League, and a guy who will probably be in the next echelon of candidates as head coaching vacancies begin to occur. And a guy who has a lot of weapons at his disposal here. Second and ten. Bennett swinging to the outside. Nothing happening there. Mark Woodard first to pop him. Ball at the 30-yard line. It'll be third down and 11. Mike Holmgren, in year five here, had a chance to coach either the Jets or the Cardinals after the 89 season. He could have had either job, opted to go back to San Francisco as an assistant, and then two years later, the pack came calling, and he felt it was right. Third and 11. Slinging it deep, but great coverage, and Brooks was the intended receiver, but he had no chance. He was covered front and back, and Brett is 0 for his first five. Hey, uh, thus far this evening, Brett Favre has really no place to put the football. He would have had to squeeze everything in there just absolutely perfectly. This is fine coverage on the part of the Philadelphia Eagles. Now, good over all defensive scheme, Dan. They're they getting a little bit of pressure, but they're getting great coverage. They're looking at the safety positioning there. I, I don't know why Brett even threw it in the direction of Brooks. He should have checked off of that and found another receiver. And trick to kick. Mark Say back to receive it. At the 20-yard line. After a 50-yard kick, it's a 9-yard return back to the 29. Tackled there by Mark Shimura. 7.58 left in the quarter, 3-0 Green Bay. From the 29-yard line, Rodney Pete on first down is lucky that wasn't picked off by George Poots, intended for Mark Ingram. Talked earlier about Koontz moving to that middle line back in position. They weren't quite sure that he was going to work out there, but back there, net positive yet. He was their weak side linebacker a year ago when Brian Williams came on so strong, they moved him to the middle. That's just a great read by Koontz. Sees Rodney Pete looking that direction, makes his break before the ball is even thrown. Oh, and that, he really came very close to getting that INT, but that, that's just a good read by Koontz, reading the eyes of the quarterback. Defense, the story on both sides tonight. The quarterbacks were combined one for ten, and Ricky Waters picks up two up to the 31-yard line. He's tackled there by George Koontz. Rodney Pete is one for five. <laughs> and Brett Favre is 0 for five. These two teams certainly know a lot about each other. We talked about the coaches coming from the 49ers and being close. And, of course, Ray Rhodes coaching here with two years with Mike Holmgren. But this is uh, kind of ridiculous for two offensive-oriented teams to be struggling like they are. That'll bring those quarterback ratings back to reality. <laughs> Third and eight. 7-18 left in the quarter. Green Bay leading 3-0. with a four-man rush. Great protection up front, and that enables Pete to hit Mark Ingram and the former Giant, who had such a key play in their Super Bowl win, who played here last year, picks up a first down. Ingram coming from way across the field, the outside position underneath the two 
men going down deep and found that open spot and Rodney was right there but more importantly Rodney had all the time in the world to wait for Ingram Ingram to come across there's the zone finds a spot sets up in it but the key there Rodney Pete had a lot of time to throw the football first and ten Eagles at their own 44 crowd making it tough for him to check off and then he throws to the near side into the arms of Mark Say for a short game. Tackled there by Leroy Butler, a pickup of two. I think we still have yet to hear Reggie White's name called. Rodney trying to get rid of the football quickly. And nobody will be more in favor of that, Frank, than his offensive line. They've been moving Reggie around, as they often do, trying to find the soft spot. First and ten, he'll always be over there at his regular left defensive end position. But after that, it's a free-for-all in passing situation. Pete on second and seven, and Rodney has to pack it in and takes it up to the 50-yard line where he's brought down by Santana Dotson, and it will be third down and four. Dotson, of course, plays inside Reggie White, came over from Tampa Bay. Had a great rookie year and then kind of sloughed off a little bit, and so came over as a, as a free agent, but he is tough against the run. And also they expect to get a good pass rush from the inside on him. This time he kind of sets up, battles his man, slides off. He's very quick and makes the stop. 5.15 left in the quarter, third and four. Waters to the outside. Breaks a tackle, turns the corner, seeks the first down. He's close. Tackled by Eugene Robinson and appears to have the first down as they spot it just inside the 46-yard line. See, that's his trademark, Ricky Waters. What a what a great second effort. There are not a whole lot of backs that ever played this game would have got that first down. Well, defensively, it's just the way the Green Bay Packers wanted it. They had a man in position to make the hit. Evans, the cornerback on that side, was there. But Ricky Waters, he made him get nothing but air. New Ricky Waters. Yeah, There's down. Evans, and he doesn't get it done. Ricky makes him miss, and Ricky gets up there and gets the first down. From the Green Bay 45, Waters over the left side for a gain of two. That ball and loose? it's a loose ball, and Ricky prone to fumbling. May have given it up again and has. Green Bay football, no play there. The play is dead at the 43-yard line. Brian Williams recovers for Frick Shermer's defensive unit. The 64-year-old defensive mentor applauds as Ray Rhodes has his team trying to regroup. And now he also has to try to regroup his running back, who once again gets a game started by putting the ball on the ground. He's got it with two hands there. Again, the ball's loose from Waters. Green Bay's football. After the fumble, Green Bay has it at the 43 as they begin the drive. Screen pass to Edgar Bennett. Good blocking. Picks up a first down into Philadelphia territory. Tackled at the 46 by William Thomas and Ricky Waters with the exasperation written all over his face. Well, what happens when you start fumbling the football? And Ricky's been fumbling over the past two or three years. And a veteran player like Sean Jones is going to think, well, number 32's got it. I'm going to put my hand in there. Okay, let's take a look at Bennett again on this play. Good block out front by Aaron Taylor. His left guard, Frank Winters, his center. Alan Timmerman, his right guard, all out in front, leading that play. Just a well-executed screen. Come on, Pete. From the 46. Far. Jones. Another completion. Mark Chamorro. Went to the Pro Bowl last year. The tight end of the 26. Choo, choo. The crowd chance tackled by Brian Dawkins. That time, Brett Favre setting up a lot of time with a great touch. I started to say, when you get that reputation as a running back, you are going to attract a lot of veterans who are going to be reaching in there to get a hold of that football. Here's Tamara coming off the line of scrimmage. Gets, for a big man, he gets downfield very quickly. But more importantly, Favre had plenty of time. He set up. He had a lot of touch on this football. He didn't have it too hot. Made it easy to catch. Brett Favre, who was 0 for 5, now 2 for his last 2 on this drive from the 27. 
Little swing out into the flat to William Henderson, the fullback, who serves as mainly a blocking back, an occasional receiver, tackled by Zomolk. It's a gain of four. Next week, our first AFC matchup of the season.